Yo, what is up guys and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, well, it's a vlog. Uh, well, it might not be starting off as a vlog, but the intention is for it to be a vlog. Unfortunately, I had some audio issues with my GoPro in this video. Darren McNamara there, the owner of Group D, is gonna have a walkthrough uh, of what is the plan for the Evo 2, as we call it, or, or the new S14 that we're building for 2021 and 2022 season. So uh, yeah, make sure you stay tuned to the video. Uh, Darren has a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we could talk for hours on end and if that's something you like to hear or like to see in the future put it on the comment section below and maybe we'll try and pick darren's brain um, a few more times because i'm pretty sure uh, he's a lot of stories to tell us especially from his uh, formative career so let's have a chat with darren and figure out why it's on the chassis rig and his plans uh, that he wants to do to this chassis and, and and all of the you know the intricate bits and pieces that we uh, that we have planned for this car I suppose, first of all, what's kind of your plans? Because, I mean, we've been chatting already that you want to put, like, your tube setup, which you've already done for a customer car already, right, for uh, an RK13 or 180 or an S13. So the plan is to do the same to a 14 as a product for yeah. customers on the off the shelf. We have a fabricator on car, but all the major fabrication is done. So basically, you'll be able to do exactly what you have in only like a few wells. Yeah, okay. Whereas everything is kind of pre-made, so the back frame structure will be pre-made, bumper bars pre-made, front structure pre-made, a lot of bolt on, bolt off stuff, so any large Allen style accident that you have yeah. yep. will be bolt on, bolt off. Bolt off, yeah. Fix everything in one go, which is just nice. So, yeah. You can make the car modular, it becomes much more like a race car and you have a huge accident and the car is out and dead square the next day. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Yeah, because like otherwise if you, you know, obviously if it was one single piece and you have an accident, you bend something, you, you have to redo it again, yeah, you, you know, from scratch. Yeah. Weld it back on, whereas this would be, like you'd have to have a really big one now to, to, to really the, the mm -hmm. set up the way it's done now. Yeah. Hoping to get to tomorrow, I hope. Just to measure. To measure, okay. Because we need to we need to knock out the back frame here, do you know? Okay. For the windows to sit, and we're just going to do that and template it, and then that'll be an off-the-shelf little piece that you can buy, do you know? So when you buy, if you buy the windows from us, and you buy the windows subframe, subframe yeah. fitting kit, you buy a fitting kit from us to get it straight in, and then you've got the reinforcing. We just reinforce that because they are, you know, this is my own. So my own. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing, like, it's small stuff like that you wouldn't even think about when you're it makes a huge piecing a car together, yeah. Yeah, like, even, you know, dealing with, with people in countries where drifting isn't as popular, and you still have people building beautiful cars out there with mm -hmm. customers from, uh, like, like, in Southern Europe and Middle East and things like that, you know, where the industry isn't really into it. Yeah. Um, you can just give them everything off the shelf and everything is A1, and it's designed right, and it's far apart, and so what do you think of this from what you see in here because I know we've had a chat we thought we might have had to drop the cage and had to do some bits and pieces but that might not be a problem no no it doesn't look too bad so other than what you'll be doing front and rear uh, front will be the same idea as the rear kind of bolt off replaceable off edge, bumper yeah. bar uh, Roll cage wise, obviously, the, I suppose the idea is that it leaves here ready to be f painted, right? That was the that's the intention. So, I mean, from what you see initially, without kind of obviously grinding off, what are you, you know, what you, you can only see so much in it, right? But um, what do, what do you think of it? You have is is harness bar. Yeah. Hasn't been thought of, and then um, we will do your car to FIA spec because mm -hmm. you're good, so you might do one of those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, Thank you. <laughs> And uh, so we might have had a couple of hours for FIA approved. Uh, obviously you'll be doing the tunnel as well for the dog box. Mm -hmm. And um, you're doing engine mounts as well. So is the intention to move the engine further back? Because I know the engine in the older car. No, I mean, with the actual rules, your engine is going to be where your engine is. Mm -hmm. um, the flywheel bolts will be kind of parallel with gotcha. the bucket. Okay, yeah. kind of it. Um, the tunnel, another great thing about the chassis table is like we can bolt the car in front and rear and we can basically cut the whole floor panel if we want mm -hmm. and the car doesn't move. Whereas if you do that on four axle stands or on the ground, the whole shell sags and everything. Yeah. So that's why you want the chassis, so we just rip the whole tunnel out of it, start from scratch. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's just not rest chassis really. Just is, rest yeah. chassis. And to be honest, I think 90% of the sil of the S13 stuff is going to fit it. Okay. And uh, we have a plan for the bits that don't fit so that we modify them the least. Um, 
and it'll be really modular and like any time you uh, if you have an issue you'll bend the bumper bar or anything like we can make you one without even having the car and we can send it to you even though yeah. you're not very bad. I know. But I've... we could send it to you. Yes. And um, you could bolt it straight on and everything back to square one. Well, I can bolt it straight on. Maybe not you, but okay. we could get someone to get someone right, it. okay. Bolt it on. <laughs> Show you where the spanner is at. So, uh, I suppose one problem that I had with the current car, and obviously you won't be able to really fix it with this because until we get a seat into it, is the, the older car was sitting a bit too low. And obviously, that's the con, isn't it? We're having buying, like we bought the shell with a cage already in it. So, that's one of the cons. You don't really get the cage built around you as a driver. So, uh, yeah. obviously, seating position will have to be kind of edited. It depends too. I mean, I guess you're tall ish and average height. So I'm not that tall. Yeah, yeah. Same with the we have the same with the Corollas. Like once you get to six feet, like and you get a bar in against the roof and the pillar, it is where it is. Mm -hmm. and your head is where it is. You can't go down really much, you know. So with the coupe and the roof line, you with the helmet on, you end up running out of space. Yeah, yeah. Them, you know? But for this bar here, this one caused a big issue. You know, when you start adding this, yeah. You know, if you, if you start to triangulate this section. That is, for me, the major issue. People start triangulating that section and they put a piece in and next thing all of a sudden you put the seat in and you put you in and it's jammed up against mm. it. Ideal, I don't really think there's much else other than the fact that a lot of the parts we will be getting for this will be supplied by you guys anyway. So, like the quick change, which is, uh, that's your one over there, but one Yours of them is, is, is in the box there. Subframe. Sub subframe. You're going to doing a custom front you subframe. Custom front subframe. Um, yeah, you'll have a totally custom front subframe, which, I mean, speaking of FIA and stuff, might not be legal. Legal, yeah. Stuff, but whatever. I mean, look, it's something, look, it's, it's easy. It's four yeah, balls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Four balls, so. so, that'll be easy. You're using a standard column, you're using standard pedals, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, which you're, we're going to build you the most the most reliable and simple package. It's just going to be, you know, it's going to be right up there. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things that we kind of talked about was the difference between, let's say, your FDS 14 that you drove, like, jeez, not far, 10 years, no, three years time, seven years ago, is it? That's sad, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, the difference between that and this, like, obviously, that car was a lot heavier. Um, I've heard stories of you trying to put weight into it or other previous FD cars in the past. Yeah. So this is not going to be an FD build. You were saying before to me that, like, if you were to... I, I was kind of under the impression that you kind of just build it once and you kind of be able to bring it anywhere but with the weight you might be a massive issue yeah. put, put it, bringing this car to let's say FD for example which has a massive weight rule yeah you can you can I mean look you, you start off with a, a build sheet or whatever you, you know what the car is going to be doing and stuff um, it will end up too light to do part of the D or whatever the FIA it currently had a weight rule but it was really vague mm -hmm. so it was easy to fit in it mm -hmm. Uh, Russia has a weight rule, who knows, you can end up there, it seems to be Irish immigration spot for British at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, there's uh, two so far, there might, there might be more, we don't know yeah, yet. So far, they either love us and want us to keep coming or this will be the first two and the last <laughs> that, two. That'll be the last two, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the two boys up at the top of the podium at the end of the year, yeah. that'll be the end of it, they won't they be going back again. Way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure far of these boys at the light, there's no Irish people there. Like yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you kind of start off with a build sheet and then, so this will probably be too light to, to ever do FD, you know? The FD weight rule is bollocks anyway, you know? Big fucking heavy cars with big huge tyres and mm -hmm. I just don't agree with it at all. But in saying that thing, when you do get to a certain, we can't go too light either because you would do it. Yes, so yeah, when yeah. You, when you do a six cylinder build, cast iron block build, you end up taking all the weight off of the back of the car, which is detrimental to the car's performance, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it'll be, we know what engine you're going to use, it'll be built with the 6 and the 2J in mind. Like. Mm -hmm. So you'll end up with, like, for a race car, centralising the mass is, a, is brilliant, like, with putting all the weight between the two wheels. But when you have a 6 and in front of the front wheels, yeah. you'll end up having some extra bits in the back just to just the off, off with balance. So guys, that's gonna end it for today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Darren and the guys at Group D do top quality work and I'm really excited to see how this chassis turns out when they're finished. I do plan on visiting Darren a lot more in the future as we watch the build progress. So if there's something that in particular you guys would like to see, put it in the comments like I said, and uh, yeah, we'll try and get to it. Also check out the links in the description for Group D if you wanna see some of their work and even check out the website
web store as well they sell top quality parts that they trust and so that uh, kind of gives a lot of confidence to their buyers as well knowing that what they're getting is what is the best that you can possibly get so uh, make sure to check out the description a lot of stuff there for you guys to check out as well if you're interested in buying some stuff as well so other than that thank you so much for watching this video and we'll talk to you guys very soon cheers and goodbye <laughs>